Hey everyone, how you all doing? Blue here, back with our Minecraft Medieval Castle tutorial. So, before we get started today, I just wanted to take a moment to say a huge thank you to all of you for the unbelievable support on this series. Now this series has certainly turned into one of my most popular series on the channel, and it's certainly the one that gets the most attention from you guys. Now, the series was originally started for a kind of project to do during lockdown, not only for myself but also for you guys as well and something that we could build along together and kind of try to sort of forget about you know everything that's happening in the background. Now I gotta say guys the support has been overwhelming, I truly did not expect the amount of support from you guys as, I, as I've had and the amount of comments from you guys has been insane. Um, I I truly am lost for words trying to say thank you for how much support you have given me on this one. Um, I know there has been a few odd mistakes during the castle and there is another little one that I need to correct today which we're going to do in a moment. But I do apologise for any little mistakes that do happen during the series guys. But please bear in mind that the series is a very large project and it's not always easy to get everything spot on every time. Sometimes little things can get missed or we can decide a little bit later on to make little changes. Now I know this does frustrate some people and some people really hate it but I only ever make these changes if one they are completely necessary or two if they're changes that are gonna really improve the castle. Now any of the little mistakes, I know a lot of people have like been questioning and asking, has there been a mistake in the block counts here or the block counts there and stuff like that. There's been quite a lot of people that have asked that. But I have been over and over and I know that pretty much every block count that I've given, especially for the layout of the castle, has been accurate. There has been one or two small little cases that I'm not going to lie have been, have been slightly out. But... There is pretty much 99% of it has been accurate. So for those of you that have been asking me a lot of questions about the numbers, are they accurate? Yes, the numbers are accurate. And the numbers that I have messed up on are ones that are not going to make a difference. Because they're only out by one block on something like the height of a tower. Which is not going to make a difference. It's not going to be a visible thing that can't be hidden. So if you have made, uh, if you have followed along and you've made one of the little mistakes I've made, they are fine to keep in the castle because they are not going to be seen. They're, pr they're probably not even going to be noticeable. Now, with that being said, guys, there is a lot of work still to be done to the castle. And the main reason I wanted to bring this up at the beginning of the video here is because as much as I love this project and I'm loving the castle, I do find myself getting to a point where I'm slightly getting a little bit of a lack of, 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 of new ideas for it. Now, the whole docks has been a series because the castle, like I've said before, is part of the docks. We started out originally as a docks and the castle is an add-on to the docks, although the castle can be built separately. Now, in case you are wondering, guys, I will just remind you that there is a link to the docks in the description if you want to follow along with that part of the series. Now, we've built about 31, 32 episodes in the docks, and we now are at episode 19 of the castle. I've been working on the docks and this area in total for just over a year, about a year and two months, a year and three months, it's something like that. It's been a long series, and as much as I love the series and I enjoy doing it, I sometimes just feel the need to have a breakaway to do uh, something different, you know, work with a different style or, you know, come up with some different ideas rather than having to build in part of a city where everything has to match. Now, I'm not saying that I'm quitting the castle, guys. Please don't think I'm saying I'm quitting the castle. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that once the castle is complete, I think before we do the church and before we do the garden at the back of the castle, I think we're going to just take a little temporary break away from the docks so that we can work on a few other things and a few things that can kind of just re-inspire me and just get me a little bit more motivated for the building because I don't want to get to a point where I've just got no motivation to build in the docks whatsoever. I don't want the series to become that type of a series. 
Um, so to stay freshly motivated and sort of freshly enjoying it, I think once the castle is complete, um, we're going to just take a short break and maybe just go, maybe even start a new area. We'll go maybe behind the back of the castle and we'll just maybe move a few hundred blocks or so. And maybe we'll come up with a new village with a different style. Maybe we could do a fantasy village or something that's very different. So what I want you guys to do for me is tell me in the comments if we were to do a new village, a new town or city or something like that, what other than medieval, because we've done a lot of this medieval theme. Um, so other than medieval, what style of build would you guys like to see the most for a bunch of tutorials? Now we got loads of things from Italian and Tuscan to deserts to witches huts, fantasy builds, steampunk. The list can go on, elven even. So guys, let me know in the comments what you would like to see most, okay? And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get an idea of what people are looking at the most. Even if there's a slight difference in the theme, we might be able to combine them into something that can please both sides. So please do me a huge favor, guys, and let me know in the comments what do you guys want to see as part of a new tutorial build series. Now, with that being said, I think I've done way more talking than I was supposed to. So with that being said, guys, we're going to dive straight in and go and start doing a little bit of building. All right, guys, we're going to dive straight in and we're going to first of all, just correct the little mess up that we've done in the last episode. Now, I'm hoping that most of you guys ain't actually reached this point yet. And hopefully you will see this video before you get to this point. Now, last episode, we started working on the storage system, and the little error that I've made is the comparators are facing the wrong way around. Now, I've turned all mine around, so they should be facing away from the hopper, like this. But for some reason, I had them all facing this way, and that is incorrect, guys. They must face away from the hopper, like this, because we get the output from the hopper going into this line. Now, there has been a couple of comments saying that this is wrong because it won't be powered and none of it will work. So what I'm going to quickly do before we get started, is I'm going to just explain to everybody how this system is going to work. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. OK, so for this system to work, we're going to first of all need an input. Our input is going to be in the throne room. We're going to have a couple of chests. And basically, those chests will be hooked up to a hopper line, which is going to run down here into this little hole here and come down to where the system is at the back. Now, the hopper line is going to basically run across the top of all these hoppers and then all the way around across the other hoppers and basically continue all the way around to here. Once it gets to here, it will go down through here down to the next set of hoppers below, and then it will start circulating there, then it go down again, and then do the same all the way until we get to the bottom floor. Now, basically what we have here is kind of like a little overflow protection system, which will allow us to sort each item into individual chests. The way this works is pretty simple. Now, I've used an anvil and I've renamed some dirt to blue. The reason I've named it to blue, you can rename it anything as long as it isn't the same as an item that's already in the game. So I've just named this blue and basically what this does, this works as a um, as basically like a block that just can't be filtered. So no matter what, this won't be picked up by the system. So what we're going to do is say we wanted only cobblestone in this hob in this um, block of chests. We would go ahead, we would put in a stack for now of cobblestone. And then we'll just put four of these in this space. Now, these are all listed as blue, so none of these are being recognized. This one will, and it'll drop down to 41. Now, as you can see, it gives out an output to here. Okay, which shows us that the system is not full, but it puts out an output enough that it brings it over to this block here. Now, once this system completely fills up, it will be up to the top hopper here. So all these chests will be full. All the hoppers will be full. Once that happens, it will block off this chest from storing anything else. Okay? So it will basically protect it from getting overflowed with items. 
Now, you will basically put a different item in each one. So here, for instance, we've got cobblestone. The next one, we might want to do andesite. And we do the same thing to this chest. Now, I'm going to go ahead just quickly, and I'm going to just remove these from the system because we don't want them in there for the moment because I don't know if I'm going to store this here. And I'm going to grab the cobblestone out of this chest here. But what we would basically do is once we had put items in that chest there, we would then have to go around to this side here, come out, and we know that that was a chest there. So we would end up going ahead and putting maybe cobblestone in there so that we know that these chests are for cobblestone. And basically, just repeat the process all the way around with items. And then we'd go down here, we'd do the same thing with all our items. And all the way till we get to the bottom. So, in order to have this a full working system, you're going to spend a lot of time finding 41 items for every single item you want stored. It will take a while, but it will be worth it in the end. Because you'll have a fully automatic system that is basically going to store every item of your choice all the way up to however many floors you choose to go down with this now i have done four floors okay and like i said if you choose to do three or four floors or five floors whatever just make sure over on the right hand side here from the stairs that we have this area ready so that we can actually make a stairway to go down all the way to the bottom okay so we're not going to do the rest of the plumbing in just yet for the rest of this system. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of work and tidy this up, get some stairways in, and then just add a few other bits. Um, we're going to do the storage and the rest of the hopper line a little bit later on. Okay, now that we've done with the explanation for how the system works, guys, let's start doing a bit of building. And we're going to start by getting in the stairway that's going to lead all the way down to the bottom floor. So for this, where our stairway is here, we literally just want to come over to here. And we're going to start by putting in a pillar here, here, and here. And we want to take them all the way to the ceiling. Once you're done, you just want to count at the top one and two. On the third one down, we're going to bring that all the way across like this. And that should leave us four blocks gap underneath here. Okay. Now, where this one is here in the center, we're going to actually go ahead, break this one, put that one diagonal, and we're actually going to just go like this so that we can keep a continuous pattern around the room. Now, for this part here, for the moment, I'm going to go ahead on the top floor here and just put in all these pillars around this edge, okay? So all these pillars that we've got in place, let's go ahead and just mark them out. Now, I'm not going to do all of these ones here or any other ones that we've got hidden behind anything. I'm going to just do these ones for now in this square, okay? Just this square here. So let's go ahead and put these all in place. Okay, now we're going to go ahead in the gaps and we're just going to place three of our logs at the same height as the beam that we have here, okay? Which is two, there's two box gap at the top. So just run that all the way around the edge. Okay, once that's in place, we want to go ahead in the three block gaps here, and we want to just put one right in the middle, just like this, okay? We're going to do that all the way around. And then in the door gaps that are five, we're going to place one here and one here, okay? So we have one on every other block, okay? So it just should be a repeating pan all the way around the room. So let's go ahead and get that all in place. Once you're done and it's all in place, we're going to go ahead and in those gaps at the top there, we're just going to put two sandstone and we're going to do that all the way around. Okay, now that that's all in place, guys, we're going to go ahead and we'll start from this door here where the stair is, for instance. And what we're going to do is where the sandstone is, we're going to go one, two, three, like this, okay? And we're basically just going to do it all the way around. Now, this is the smooth sandstone, and we're just going to basically follow it 
all the way around the pillars that we've just placed. Okay, we can leave the corners like this and then we're just going to do this all the way around. So go ahead, place four on top and that will give you a back in on all of your walls and then it'll give you a gap where your doors are. Okay, so once your doors are done, just go ahead and put one row across the top there. So what you'll end up with is something like this in the door gaps. Let's go ahead and get the rest of this in place. Okay, once we're done, we should have something that looks a bit like this. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to neaten up the ceiling first of all. So first of all, starting on any side, I guess, um, when we come in from the stairway here, I'm going to go in towards this corner, okay? Now, there's a hole here where the king's chair is, uh, where we're going to have the little drop down, but we're going to work something else out for that. So from the top of this pillar here, we're going to just cover it up Make a straight row all the way across to the other side. Then basically we're just going to go every other block like this and do the same thing, stretching it all the way across from one side to the next. Okay guys, now at this point you have two options, well several options that you can choose here. So we want to basically cover these gaps with something small. So I would go with either a spruce half slab, which will give you something like this. You can also go with these spruce trapdoors. Or you can even use a different wood altogether. Now I've got to be honest guys, I do like the trapdoors. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just go ahead and run this all the way across like this with the trapdoors. Just to cover up the bottom of the floor there and just to give it a little bit of a nicer finish. Okay, so go ahead and do that in all of your gaps. Okay, once you've got that all in place, we're going to start by finding the center block in the ceiling. So as you can see, this is the center here where the doorway is. And this is also the center where the doorway is. So if we come up, we're looking at about here, I think. Yep, I think that is the one. Let's go ahead and just break that for a minute. Bring it down a little bit just so we can see. That lines up with the center of that one. And then from here, I'm pretty sure. Yep, it lines up with the center of that. So let's go ahead and just break two, two of those off. And then we're going to just put an upside down stair on that side. And an upside down stair on that side. Now we're going to go ahead and just make a little kind of um, sort of uh, kind of like a chandelier, I guess, is the, is the best way to say it. Now I'm planning 1.15.2 at the moment, so we don't have access to the new chains. But if you're planning the 1.16 snapshots, then you can go ahead here rather than the iron bars and you can use the chains. Now we're also going to get ourselves some lanterns. And we're going to go ahead and we're just going to make a pretty simple kind of uh, chandelier here. We're going to go one and I think we're going to put two iron bars. So if you're using the 1.16 snapshots, this can be the um, the chains. And then we'll put another one of the fences on the end. We're going to go one and then kind of make a three by three sort of square all the way around like this. Put one in the center on each side, like that. Then underneath here, we're going to put one there and then go one on each side like this. And then one right in the middle. And I think we might just put one more underneath like this. Okay, so you have this kind of shape. Now, all we're going to literally do here is go ahead and just put in some lanterns, put them on the top ones first. Then we can put them underneath on these ones. 
just like that and then one more boom, right on that bottom bit there there we go i think that looks pretty good i think i might change this one here and then that one there and what we do is we'll put in a plank right there and then one of those there yeah i think that looks good i like that you ain't got to have the plank there, but I just think it just makes it look a little bit stronger there. Like it would have a support there. Um, but you guys can go ahead and put anything you want there. It's entirely up to you. Okay, it's time to add some details to the ceilings. So for this, what we're going to do is we're going to start over here. And what we do is underneath all these arches, we put an upside down stair each side. Including where the doorways are here, we're going to put one at each side like that. Okay, let's do that all the way around. Okay, now make sure that you leave these two sections here empty, but make sure you get the upside down stairs all the way around the rest of the room. Okay. Now starting on this wall here, we're going to go ahead and where we've got the gap underneath where the pillar is here, we're going to put an upside down stair. But where we have this pillar underneath, we're going to put one there and then an up a normal one just underneath like this. Okay, so one then an upside down one. Here, because we've got this gap for the door here, we're just going to put two stairs like that. Then because this one's got the pillar, we'll put the one underneath like so. And just continue that pattern all the way across like this. Then we're going to turn around and repeat that same pattern on the opposite side. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get our spruce stairs and we're going to go around first of all and just break a little rim like this just this one block okay break this off all the way around then once you're done go ahead and place your upside down spruce stairs like this and just run it all the way around this inside edge making sure that you twist on the corners Once you've done that, you want to go ahead in the corner here, place a strip spruce log or a strip spruce wood in the corners. Then you want to get your spruce fence, run that in between the gaps. Once you're done, go ahead and place a spruce trapdoor on top of your corners on your stripped spruce wood. Then grab your spruce fence and we're going to place one underneath the upside down stairs like this. And then underneath we're going to put in a lantern. Do the same on the opposite side here. Now for the opposite walls here we're going to try and do something just a little bit different I think. So what we do is underneath here where we have the trap door we're going to break that put a full block of spruce planks. The same here then we can put in normal stairs upside down stairs like this where that gap is there we're gonna go ahead and just do a in fact no we won't we're gonna just leave that one leave that as it is we're just gonna put it on this one then we just put the stair uh, the fences and our lanterns underneath like this and then again we're just gonna repeat the same thing over here so let's break that we go one and two sorry that should be a full block let's do that again a full block and then here a full block right in line with our pillars upside down stair on each side and then a normal stair underneath fence post and then our lanterns perfect Okay, now for the top floor here, I'm just going to do a bit of decorating quickly. So we're going to just basically put in some little sort of tables. So we're going to put two dark oak stairs there, one in the center, just to make some tables in these gaps. Okay, and we're going to just put that in all of these gaps all the way around. Okay, so each corner should look something like that. 
Obviously, we'll leave the doorways and then we'll repeat it without falling over on this side. All right, guys, now before I do anything else, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to replicate this same design down on the stairs, not with the walls, just with this little edge here. So basically, we go down to this level. We're going to go ahead and first of all, break one little ledge all the way around. Once we get to here, we're gonna go ahead and put our upside down stairs all the way around again. Now in the corners, go ahead and place your strip spruce logs. Then we're gonna go ahead and place our spruce fences. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and place in our spruce trap doors on top of the strip logs. Just like so. Now, we're going to go ahead and continue that all the way down. So we're going to do it on this floor and then this floor. But obviously, we're not going to do it on the bottom because we've got a big open floor down here. So let's go ahead and get that in place. Okay guys, once that's all in place, you should have something that looks a bit like this. And one thing I've just realized that I didn't do was repeat onto this side of the wall. So we've got our lanterns down this side, but we didn't get them on this side. So make sure that you don't miss that out guys and go ahead and repeat your pattern. So just remember where your pillars are, you've got a full plank. Then you want the stairs underneath. Upside down stairs, uh, normal stairs underneath those ones. Fences underneath. And then finally, a lantern at the very bottom. There we go. And that matches the opposite side. Okay, guys. Now, just for a little bit of decoration, if you want to, you could add some carpet. Or you could throw in some banners. I'm going to put one or well, two above the doorways like this. Okay. Um, I'm going to put it on all these doorways above here. And then I think for the next level down on here, I'm going to just put it where the stairway is going to be. So just in this little section here. Okay, now I think just for these little corners here, because they do look a little bit bulky, I think what we might do is break one, two, three, four, one in the ground, put a plank back in there, and then maybe just some of our fence posts like this. I think it just looks a little bit better. It looks a little overly bulky in the corners. So I'm going to go ahead and change those out like that, guys. If you want to do it, you can, but if you don't and you want to keep it as a bulky pillar, then by all means, keep it as a bulky pillar. All right, guys, now that is that all in place. Now, one thing I did just notice, and I just put it in place as well, is that I had a few of these upside down stairs here missing and a couple of these blocks in the corner. So I've gone ahead and put them all in place as well. So guys, if you've missed any, just make sure you go ahead and put them in place as well. We've got the corners all in place now, so things are looking pretty good. If we look down here, you can see the corners are all in place. 
and I think it's starting to really shape up now. So now we're going to go ahead and start getting in the stairway. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to start from the doorway here, which again, if we jump over here, this is where our stairway is. And just make sure you're on the right where we've got these two little gaps here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go one from behind this left pillar, two, three, four, five, six, I think. Yep, six should be good. Then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six across. So we're in line with this pillar. One, two, three, four, five, like that. And then from this one here, we're just going to break it all the way across and then get rid of that middle section. Now, as we go down here, I'm going to just break these glowstone out of the way here. Okay. And we're going to repeat that same pattern that we just broke out. We're going to repeat it on the next level down. Okay. So if we come down here on this one, we've actually got this pillar just here on the corner here. But we're going to just. Um, hmm. Because this was going to get seen through there. We're going to leave that, okay? We'll leave that. And what we'll do is at the very top here, we're going to just bring it all the way up to the very top here so that it matches all the way through. Yeah, just like that. Now, I think that should still be enough room. That should be fine. So, what we're going to do now is to match it up we should be going one two three four five that's going to leave us a two gap here yep that's right and then one two three four five across to here and then five down to here and then break it all the way across break this one Now that we've got that one there, we're going to go down one more. Let's get rid of the glowstone, just like this. And we're going to do the same thing. So this time we're going to go five. And then once you're in line with that pillar, bring it down again to the pillar. Bring it across and then just get rid of this section here. And don't forget, as you're coming down here, guys, let's go ahead. First of all, just get rid of these stairs here. And then the one row in the gap here. So we should have flat walls going down in the gaps. Okay. Now, we've just got one more floor to go down. So let's go ahead. We're going to put a gap in between here. Five down across to here. One, two, two, three four five and then just join it up and get rid of that centerpiece and then finally get rid of the glowstone and those stairs right okay that's looking pretty good now what we're going to do here is first of all if we have any of these um planks in the pillars here going up replace those with the um with the stripped log okay make sure we've got those in place all right guys we're gonna go ahead and add some walls in here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it up until we are level with the floor in here on the very top floor okay we don't take it to the ceiling take it to this floor here okay so let's go down to the very bottom and we'll work our way up so from behind the doorways here, we want to go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, making sure we're behind that second pillar that we put in. Then at the back here, we want to go one, two, three, four, five, like that. And then we want to go one, two, three, and we want to then put a spruce wood pillar like that. Okay. So now we want to raise all the sandstone and this spruce wood pillar all the way up until we're level with that top floor on the floor level, not the ceiling. OK, so let's go ahead and get that all in place. 
Okay guys, one thing to quickly take note of is we actually have to bring the sandstone back one further, well, it's the same measurements that I said down the bottom, but we're going to end up having to remove the spruce planks as you come up, okay, because they come in one further than I actually realized. So, what we're going to do now is once you've got all of this wall in place and you're up to the top floor, you want to first of all, remember that the front here we have a pillar on the very top floor, we need to keep it like that. But on the rest of the floors here, you don't actually have to put it. It actually looks quite nice with just the sandstone there. If you want, you can go ahead and make it a pillar so that it looks exactly the same as the top here. But I think it actually looks quite nice like this. And I'm going to leave it like that all the way down to the ground. Okay, so I went ahead and I removed that pillar away from the ground there. Just because I think it with the upside down stair there and the sandstone, it looks quite nice. Now, let's go back to the top and start getting in our stairway. So from the inside here, we're going to go ahead, first of all, break these two blocks here and then place two of our spruce stairs. OK, place two stairs here, then two more here, two here and then two just here. Then we're going to place some of our planks across this section here, bring it all the way across. So we'll have a little just two layers, basically. Then with the stairs again, we're going to place stairs here, then here, make sure you place them in the right place, then there, and then finally our last stair, just there. Okay, now that we've got that stairway in place, we're going to repeat it all the way down with the same pattern. So what we're going to do is on the one floor down from the top, we're going to come in here. And again, right where that front pillar is, we're going to break those two there and we're going to place two stairs there. We're going to place another two, then another two, another two, and then another two. At this point, we're going to change it out for our four blocks and just put them in here. Now, you might want to temporarily just put some torches in here because it's going to be pretty dark and you're likely going to get some mob spawn. Uh, we will put some lighting in in just a moment. Then we're going to bring our stairs down from here. So let's go ahead and just put in our stairs there and there. Okay, down to the next one. So now we're going to come in here and again, break these two, start the stairs from here and just repeat the pan. And we're going to repeat this all the way down until we get to the ground floor. All right, now that we're finally on the ground floor, we're basically going to come in here around this side here and we're going to start by putting some upside down stairs underneath these stairs now i know it's a little bit dark guys so what we do is we're going to put a lantern right there okay it's pretty close but it gives us enough room to kind of see what we're doing then outside here guys upside down spruce stairs in the gaps here and then i think once we get to that very top gap there we're just going to put in a full block like that a full plank okay now we're going to go up to here and we're going to basically just do the same thing. So we're going to just repeat the process with the stairs. Then we're going to come up, turn around backwards, do the same thing here, just like this. And then two full planks at the very top and that's our next floor. Now, while you're there, you've got to make sure you come into here and place a lantern right there now that might not be very bright coming down so what we might be better off doing here is actually getting ourselves some of our fences let's go one two and then put the lantern just there yeah i think that's better that should give us enough light Okay, so now that's in place, we can go ahead and move up the stairs. So we're going to here, turn around, and then again, upside down stairs. All the way to the top in the middle here, two fence posts and then our light. Turn around and put in the rest of the stairs. And then two planks at the very top. All right, guys, let's just continue repeating that until we get to the very top. All right, guys, once you get to here, you'll see that we don't have any stairs like that to actually do anything with. 
So what we're going to do at this point is, first of all, we'll get our smooth sandstone and we're going to just bring a wall across this one side only, okay? But not on that corner. We're going to leave that one like that. Let's go ahead and put in this across here, like this, all the way up until we reach the ceiling. Okay, once your wall is in place, let's go ahead and let's just break one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we'll break one, two, and three across here for now. Let's go ahead and put our planks down here. Then we're going to put in our planks across here, all the way down to here, and then just fill this section in here. Now that should leave us enough room to get down and go underneath here. And then I think we're just going to have a lantern there. Obviously, because of the height here, because we've got this ceiling piece here, we don't need to put in the, um, the fence post. But you can if you want to, but it will make it a bit lower. Now, I'm actually going to not use these top ones here. In fact, let's actually remove that. And what we do is, yeah, we're going to completely section this off. Let's get rid of that. We'll make a little post with that. Bring it all the way across here. And then we're going to raise this piece here all the way to the ceiling. And also these ones here and these ones in here. And we're just going to take them all the way to the ceiling. Okay, and in the gap there, let's just go ahead and bring that strip spruce log all the way up there. And we're going to put one on this corner here. We're also going to put one opposite just here. And then we're going to go one, two, three on the fourth one up. We're going to do that upside down stair. And then in the gap, we're just going to put some smooth sandstone. And we'll put a door on there in just a minute. But before we do that, we're going to come around this side. Have a look in here. We're going to come all the way down here. Put in our lantern just there. And overall, I think that looks pretty good. And in fact, better than that, it would look better if we don't do that and then have our lantern underneath. Just like so. Now, to brighten it up up here, it's going to be a bit awkward because we can't make it look equal. So maybe we'd do something like that. And then we could just maybe put in some spruce on that side, spruce stairs on that side. Even that don't make it look equal. Let's get rid of those from there. And maybe just to make it look neat, uh, uh, brighter in this corner, we're going to put a trapdoor there. Make sure it's on the top half of the block below. And then we're going to put in a lantern on there. If you wanted to, if you're playing on bedrock, you can actually put a slab there because I don't think it works with um, trapdoors. Okay, right, that's looking good now, guys. We've got a nice walkway that goes all the way down to each level. So I won't go all the way down, but I think that is looking pretty good. Um, okay, right, at the very top here, this is going to turn into a room of sorts. I'm not sure what it's going to be just yet. I'm considering if we do a garden in the back, because I think this is a main wall. Yeah, this is going to lead straight into where the garden is. Now, the garden is going to be raised up. So, we will have some room underneath here. So, this may possibly become a room for a smeltery. If you're playing survival, this is going to be really good. You'll have a super smelter in the wall here. And it'll go behind the um, underneath where the garden is going to be. So you won't see nothing behind it. But we'll have a bunch of furnaces. And uh, yeah, it should be pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to leave the rest of this room as it is. Now, I don't think I'm going to do all the plumbing in for the sorting system in this episode. I think we're going to work on that probably next episode. Um, because we've got quite a lot of work done in this episode. And I don't want to make this one too long. Um, so hopefully this should be good. So the sorting system is mostly in place now, guys. And like I said, it's going to be very easy to finish up the rest of the plumbing and get that all in place. Um, but yeah, we'll get the rest of that in place in next episode. 
For this episode, I just wanted to get the stairway and finish up the top of this landing and kind of just get the rest of the sorting system looking decent. And I think now it is really starting to shape up. Now, as I come down here, I don't know if now that the stairs are in place, if that looks a bit out of place. I think it might do, and I think maybe it might feel better if we do that. Yeah, I think that does. Because we've now got a stairway there, it actually feels better having that pillar in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually put that pillar in. Yeah, it definitely feels better now that we've got the stairway in. And then on the last floor, just down here, I think we're going to just put one here. There we go. Now, I'm debating what to do with the centerpiece here, guys. I am tempted to turn this into a nether pool, have a square nether pool going all the way up. Well, no, it won't be all the way up, but maybe up to one of the floors, maybe even just up to the first floor. We can maybe put a cross section on this level. So we could have a platform even cross through the middle like that. And then underneath could join the nether portal. Just an idea, not definite. I don't know if that's going to be the case just yet. But it's something that we could consider. Alright guys, now with that being said, I think that is just about it for today's episode. So next episode, we're going to finish up getting the sorting system all plumbed in. We're going to be doing a little bit of work up in the kitchens as well. I've got some more plans for the kitchen area. So we're going to be doing some work on there. Um, and then I guess we're going to have to just start working out what we're going to do with some of the other rooms. Um, we've got quite a few rooms upstairs to play with. In here, I want to do a um, dungeon in here. We're going to have a small dungeon around this area here, which is going to come over to... I think a torture room. I'm not certain, but I think we're going to have a torture room in here. And then I guess we have some kind of room in here. Like I said, maybe it'll become a uh, smelting system in here, an auto smelter. Then over this side here, we do have a large area here to play with. And again, here, I'm not certain what we're going to put in here. This could become a ballroom because in the dining hall up here where the king's room is, we might be able to work a way to bring a stairway down uh, joining into this bit here. So we could come straight down into, um, into that. I think that might work out pretty cool. Um, but we'll have to see what we can do with that. But yeah, we could have a ballroom or something like that down here. Maybe. Not definitely, but maybe. Anyway, guys, if you have any other ideas of things that we should add or include into this castle, please be sure to let me know in the comments. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash that like button. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Just don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. But for now, this is Blue Nerd signing out, and I will catch you guys in the next one.